Well, good afternoon. Uh, it's great to, great to be here at OCP. I, uh, um, I think it's probably my eighth OCP, actually. Uh, missed the first one, but everyone after that, so I've, I've been, been able to attend. It's uh, great to see a lot of um, colleagues and friends here. Um, this morning, I mean, you can't walk but a few feet, and you know, you're, you're seeing someone you knew from a customer, partner, now maybe a competitor. So the, the whole gamut uh, takes place. So it's awesome to be here. Um, my name is Raymond Miles. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, building uh, server solutions on the Project Olympus building blocks. So kind of jump in a little bit. I um, want to first off give an overview of ZT. Um, some of you might not, not know who ZT Systems is, so we'll start there. Real quick disclaimer, we are not ZTE. <laughs> That's a Chinese company. We're a US-based company. So there you go. Um, Get, get into the uh, Project Olympus building blocks, kind of do a refresher on those. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with them, but we'll just highlight those. And then we'll be talking about a, um, a new server um, that we've designed uh, using those building blocks. And then finally, discuss some of the, I guess, product development advantages associated with using these building blocks. All right, so ZT Systems. Um, we were founded in uh, 1994. Um, and as a, as a desktop company. So building um, really dis, you know, desktop uh, platforms, um, you know, selling it through various uh, channels, ultimately uh, shifted it to kind of a, a dot-com um, fulfillment model. Um, Costco was one of our big customers back in the day. Some of you might have, might have seen it. Um, and uh, ultimately, we shifted the company in 2004 to focus completely um, on the server market. So, um, and now the entire uh, focus of ZT is, is building servers. Um, we're a private company, um, so, you know, and we really don't do a lot of marketing, so hence, you know, a lot of folks don't, don't know who we are, uh, but um, anyhow, our, our marketing guy is very excited about this event because he gets to do something. Um, we are a US-based company. Um, we have global, but we do have global operations to support our customers. So, um, you know, the predominant of our operations are here, but we do have a global presence. Um, we have really been formed by, you know, and evolved through working with our customers. Um, and this statement of built for hyperscale is, is a very um, foundational element of, of how we do business. We, you know, there's that tagline there, you know, partnering from whiteboard to data center. That's very much how we engage in product development with our customers. We try to figure out, you know, what problem you're trying to solve, right? What's the workload? How do we build a server and a solution to deliver to that, you know, that problem statement? Um, sometimes that's as simple as, you know, it's a cost kind of model, right? I want the cheapest dollars per terabyte server possible. Sheet metal and drives, go make it happen. Or, you know, there's a, a certain performance profile, or there's you know various elements that come into play um, when we're building product, and so it's optimizing server har hardware for a workload or a different business uh, case, and um, that that flexibility and willingness is um, how how we engage our customers. Um, but the flip side of that is also on the ultimately on the business side, right? Of of supply chain and fulfillment. You know, we as we support these hyperscale cloud customers, I mean, there's the, uh, I'd call it, you know, the promise of infinite capacity, right? You know, there's someone that wants an instance type or they want a new server, they want something, and they expect it just to be there, right? I, I want 10,000 of these so I can render a movie or whatever it is, whatever problem they're trying to do, it needs to be there. But somebody's got to deliver that, right? It's actual infrastructure. It's servers, racks, processors, memory. I mean, the whole thing has got to show up. And we've really honed, I would say, the expertise to be able to do that in partnership with our customers. So it's, um, anyhow, it's, it's, it's designing is one thing, fulfilling that promise of infinite capacity is another. And we've, uh, we've done really well there. And then finally, we have to build a manufacturer, right? So we, um, we do our manufacturing and uh, build really mostly rack products now. Um, and doing that at a high level of quality is critical. It's absolutely critical to, to our business. All right, so that's kind of a quick overview. Now I want to shift gears and talk a little bit about the Project Olympus uh, building blocks. So they're, 
you know, I'm sure that many of you are probably familiar with these, right? You've sent, attended sessions on them. But, you know, for our purposes, that, you know, the motherboards, there are several motherboard flavors. These are really set up for flexible expansion, right? There's PCI and other things you can do with the motherboard to build different products. There's the power supply, um, the, you know, the 340-watt, uh, three-phase power supply, and at a, at a um, data center level, it's a very efficient design, you know, with, with, with great um, redundancy. This universal PDU is one, it's honestly is one of my favorites because it's really kind of low tech. It's really, there's not a lot of excitement in a PDU that's got an, you know, an adapter plug. But operationally speaking, this is huge, you know, because again, we, sh we deliver racks. And if you have to define your rack SKU based on a PDU for global deployments, you end up, you know, same L6 or same server turning into 10, 15 SKUs, and it's just not manageable. It's really very complicated, but this is a very simple solution, really. You know, give me a universal PDU, and um, you know, off you go. So that's a really, really nice ad. And there's the rack. It's a 19-inch rack. Nothing too exciting about the rack, it's, but, it's, but you need that standard to, to build within. And then finally, the, the rack manager provides a, um, you know, a you know, a server, a really good foundation for, for server management for these solutions. So from there, um, you know, Project Olympus has uh, several, several um, server building blocks, right? So you've got the various flavors of, of processor compute nodes with Intel, Cavium, Qualcomm, and AMD, all, all um, having uh, contributions there. Um, and those are fantastic, you know, serving either as, you know, compute, or you know, head nodes for, for other, other applications. So then there's storage, there's the H, HX88 and the FX16, you know, depending on you, know, you need some cold storage or you know, more performance storage, there's some, some nice options there uh, to, to build on. And then finally on the GPU side, there's the HGX1, so to kind of round out the, the server portfolio. And all of these you know, fit within the, the Mount Olympus rack and, and framework, you know, uh, blind mating into the MPU, and um, off you go. So, in the, the space where, where um, there's really a hole right now is in that, in that GPU space, and that's where um, today we're, we're gonna be announcing our, our, um, our server solution to the, I we'll guess, we gotta get a name for this, but it's basically a 3U expansion chassis, right? PCI expansion chassis. And this is really targeted at, um, you know, GPUs or FPGAs or other PCI devices that, you know, you need to be able to have a platform for those. So, you know, when we looked at this, this design opportunity, right, we, um, we focused on what are the building blocks that we could, we could use as a base for this design effort. And, you know, I've listed them here, you know, we started with the, the, um, the Intel motherboard, right? The one U heatsink that's already been designed and validated, the power supply, the PDU, rack, and rack manager. These are all in production, hardened pieces of you know, fir you know, firmware and or hardware, right? So they're, they're ready to go. And then we focus on, okay, so what do we need to do, you know, right, to actually make this new, this new server? And so we, um, we focused on basically two versions of the chassis and I'll get into those in a minute. Um, you know, riser cards, and you know, when, as we looked at these riser cards, you know, obviously we had to do quite a bit of design work on you know, simulations and you know, validating the topology, making sure that we'd have robust um, you know, timings and, and that the, the design overall would, would not only you know, electrically work, but be manufacturable, be serviceable, right, the, the, whole, the whole gamut. Um, Thermal, you know, and the ducting and cooling had to, you know, do thermal simulations, ensure that, um, you know, we could cool this thing, right? Because the kind of devices we're going to put in here, are, they're pretty high power, and um, they have various uh, thermal characters that have to be met. So we, uh, we focused on those, and then finally the, the PDB um, power distribution board that basically took the, the three um, Mount Olympus uh, 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 power supplies, put them together to make one one um, power supply. So those are the pieces that, that we focus in on our, our design efforts. So with that, um, this is kind of a little bit more detail on the actual um, server design. Um, so you've got both uh, you know, six 
uh, double wide 300 watt by 16 PCIs, or another, the other configuration is 12 um, a single wide uh, 75 watt by 16 PCI devices. So again, the, that's kind of the, the meat of this, of this design, um, providing that, that compute uh, in those, those, the horsepower of those, of those expansion slots for, for the server. Um, see the power supplies there. It's blind mated, so again, it, this, this, you know, these three power supplies that are connected with the PDB, they blind mate right into the, um, the PDU in the, in the back of the rack. So maintaining that, that um, usage model for, for the design. Um, again, the, the whole premise of this is that we started with these known good building blocks, right? And so our focus was really on validating the, the other pieces, um, the pieces that we had designed and, uh, and to provide, you know, uh, a really a, a, a lot more optimized time to market. So what are the advantages, right, of, of this, this approach? I kind of hit on this. One of them is, you know, as you look at this, this uh, you know, cloud market, you have to have flexible designs, you know, to go to basically take one platform to support a lot of use cases. So, you know, we, with using this, we were able to um, configure this thing and provide, honestly, a platform that had a lot of flexibility, right? Um, but then from there, we were able to, you know, really focus on, again on the, on the parts of the design that we owned, right, to, to basically move this thing faster through development, right? You know, we also were able to lower the, um, the, the cost, right? So if, you, if we don't have to develop a motherboard, we don't have to develop a heat sink, we don't have to develop, you know, all these other pieces, just take those off the shelf, um, lowers our risk, right, lowers our costs, and allows us to, to move, um, you know, really the, the time to market advantage faster, right? Because, you know, in this cloud market, you know, really, you know, the whole success criteria is, is, is that configuration and optimized solutions, but doing it, you know, fast, right? Over and over again, we get hit with uh, requirements around, you know, it's got to be there tomorrow, right? We got to go faster. And, and so, you know, using these, these building blocks has been a huge advantage, particularly in this design, to, to move this, uh, this product faster. All right, well, that, that is my presentation. Um, I will open up to questions. Pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So this, for this design, so the question was, do we design the motherboards ourselves? For this design, we did not. We used the Project Olympus uh, motherboard, the Intel motherboard. Um, and, uh, but, but as a company, we designed motherboards, yes. Availability of, of this design, yeah. So good question. So we're, I mean, Right now, we're still in development. Um, we will be, you know, uh, going, being in production uh, second half of this year, right? And we'll be planning on, you know, obviously contributing this to, to OCP um, and going through that process once it's completed. All right, well, if there's no other questions, have a great rest of your show and uh, enjoy the evening. Thank you. <laughs>